So once the rheumatologist diagnosed me, uh, I was on a biologic that was only indicated for rheumatoid arthritis. And he said, I think you need to try Simsia, which he knew was in clinical trial phases for non-radiographic axial spondylarthritis. I said, okay. And he said, it's already indicated for ankylosing spondylitis, so that will help you, probably. Let's see. If it does, then we know we're onto something. And I said, okay. So he switched my medication. And remember, when I was on the other biologic and getting this diagnosis was the time that my pelvis, I had to walk with my pelvis tilted forward. It was so bad. I was, I couldn't get out of bed. I felt like my, my spine was glass. It took about four weeks and I was back to walking normally. Uh, I still have those bouts where, you know, I do need to watch it. I do need to sit, but I have not had the experience of my spine feeling like it's going to shatter. Um, I haven't had the experience of walking on my tippy toes <laughs> with my pelvis forward because I can't straighten my back. So those things have gone away since I've been on this treatment. So that has been extremely positive. It's as far as the challenge is, if, if there were such a thing of <laughs> non-radiographic axial spondylitis back in 2007, 2009, I'm sure that I could have been diagnosed a lot earlier because I definitely, I, one thing that nobody has ever said to me prior to that rheumatologist re-diagnosing me was the word textbook. I've always been mystery patient, atypical, Textbook was not something that I ever heard until then. He said, this is textbook, non-radiographic. And I thought, wow, I'm textbook. I'm something, like, I have a category now. Um, but I do question, back in 2007 to 2009, um, well, really 2010, the, AC, the American College of Rheumatology had upgraded the diagnostic criteria for rheumatoid arthritis. And my original rheumatologist was aware of these. I think he may have even been on the committee for them because he mentioned it when he diagnosed me in 2009 that I will qualify for rheumatoid arthritis based on the new criteria. Um, it makes me wonder uh, how many seronegative rheumatoid arthritis patients out there are like me. That's the, fir that's the first issue with, with, um, that I've experienced with, with having... Uh, the reason why I think it needs to be more well-known. My rheumatologist knows that you cannot put down the non-radiographic axial spondy on a diagnostic, uh, on a diagnosis and have insurance cover it. it, it I, he tried. <laughs> and they came back and they denied the medication. So he changed my diagnosis back only for paper purposes to rheumatoid arthritis so that I could get the treatment I needed, and it, that being Simsia, and the treatment is indicated for RA and ankylosing spondylitis. So I feel very fortunate that my doctor knows to do that. Um, now, I'm not saying that any rheumatologist wouldn't know to do that, but if they don't know that they have non-radiographic axial spondylitis, then maybe they're going to get a medication like I did in the beginning that was only indicated for, for RA and it could delay. So I just, the, the, the awareness of this disease and the need to have uh, the proper diagnosis for it, it's just, there's just such a need.